I just think it's a wonderful thing. I had a blessing myself today at work. As y'all know, I love to talk. No big surprise. And so I had an opportunity to tell every single lady that walked by me today, Happy Mother's Day. And if they turned around and said, I'm not a mother, I said, not yet. <laughs> so you never know. Some will be, some won't be. Which is actually the, uh, the focus of my sermon tonight. I want to start it out with Isaiah 41.10. And it goes, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will upheld, uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. When I read that the other day, that actually reminded me of my mother. Because she pretty much said the same thing. She says, I will take care of you. I will lift you up. I will help you in every way. But I also have the right hand of righteousness. And I think it's because of the mothers and having the things that they do and the ability that they have to persuade us to do either good or bad. I think that's what made us the people we are today. And I am so glad that I had a mother that was willing to tell me, Royal, you either do right or you do wrong. You'll pay for the consequences, you'll enjoy the rewards. And she's right. Look what I got back there. Everybody has a mother. Whether we know or not, whether they're living or not, whether we live near them or not, we all have a mother. Whether we get along with them or not, whether they see them a lot or seldomly or not at all, we all have a mother. None of us would be here otherwise. Some mothers are famous, such as our own Lord Jesus Christ's mother. Some mothers are infamous, like Ma Barker. When I was a kid, I actually admired her. Boy, was I going down the wrong road there. <laughs> Most are only known to their own family and friends. But the fact remains, we all have a mother. In most cases, a mother is the vessel provided by our Lord God to conceive, create, and bear life. In some cases, mother is one who offered to step in and raise us for one reason or another. Our own birth mothers could not or would not. In some cases, the father is also the mother. Sometimes he may not even be the birth father, but just the same, he is now the mother. Some of us were raised in orphanages and other institutions where someone there stepped in and become a mother. This is the hardest job on the planet. And every mother I have ever spoken to says, I don't think I did it right. I don't believe that. Not for one second. Anybody that takes the time and show the love and the courage and the tenacity to raise a child, whatever they are, man, woman, institution, if they took it in their mind to raise that child, they're a saint to Our own Lord God is sometimes referred to as a mother, mother nature. What we see every time we open our eyes, any time we look out a window, any time we're driving down the road, mother nature's raining on us tonight, but we're here. That's our Lord God. He is our mother and our father. He's the one who stands up and says, these are your choices. This is what you're gonna get if you go good or if you go bad. That's what a mother does. And our Father has created that in our mothers. Throughout the Bible, mothers are the pillar of patience, the providers of comfort, the protectors of the young, and very often mentioned as the thoughtful givers of knowledge and the family law. And in many, many cases, they're the only religion in the house. As a child, I would have known absolutely nothing about Jesus Christ had it not been for my mother yanking on my ear to get me in the car to take me to church. Thank God for that. It took me 30 years later to figure out why, but I'm figuring it out. That's a mother. We know that rising before any others in the household to ensure that the families are fed, clothed, clean, and ready for the day. We also know that most of the time they're the last ones to close their eyes at night. They aren't expecting anything from that. But they do it. 
When a child is sick or sad or scared, mothers go into overdrive, sacrificing their own rest until their little ones, no matter how old we are, are comforted and well. I don't think there's a mother here that hasn't stayed up many a night making sure the rest of us get through that night. And God bless you for that, I say. How often do we simply say thanks, Mom? I know I didn't say it enough. How often do we forget? How often, if at all, do we say, Mom, sorry? That's a hard one for me. These mothers are a special gift from God. They're not just somebody that stood up and said one day, I'm going to spend the rest of my life taking care of someone. People don't just do that, just for the heck of it. It's not a hobby. How often do we simply forget to give thanks for that? How many of us actually say, thank you, Lord, for what my mother has done for me? And we should do that constantly and continually. Though I've forgotten myself many, many, many times. To hear just a simple thank you makes it all worthwhile to mothers. They don't even expect that. Most of us, in our own daily lives, expect more than that for ourselves. How many times at work has somebody not said thank you to you and you thought you said, well, that, you know, you know. But how often do we not just look at our mom and say thanks? You know? And one day we may not have the opportunity. But if we say thank you in our prayers, no matter where mom's at, mom's going to hear it. God's going to see to that. God makes sure his saints reap their rewards, and a mother is a saint. Do we really need a special day on the calendar to celebrate the ones who daily and hourly celebrated us? I personally don't think so. But it's a very nice extra way of saying to mom, you know, you're the most important thing I ever had in my life. Whoever, or whomever, or whatever mom was. Many of us may not see eye to eye with our mothers. Many of us, such as myself, may be kind of at odds with our mothers right now. She's still my mother. That will never change. We must never, ever forget what they have so selfishly done for us. From the day we were however brought together to this very second, this is what a mother does. We should all give praise and thanks to our Lord and Savior for our mothers. Why would we be without them? I just want to say, thanks, Mom. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Since our son-in-law is in here, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Can I get you to come on up here, Jeremiah? It's a good man to be proud of over here. Good, solid, wicked boy. And cares about his son. I've got a whole mess of flowers here, young man. And i got a whole bunch of mothers in here. You think you can make one meet with the other? Sure. You're a good man. I want to thank everybody for coming here this evening. And after we have our closing prayer, I want to ask you all to join us as a chow. Got a little bit of fresh food back there. Got the chicken. Got Looks like cookies and all kinds of good stuff. There's coffee, yeah. Coffee. <laughs> but anyway, would you like to go to the Lord with me here real quick? Thank you, Lord, ever so much for allowing us to do what we've done here today. Purely in your name, and not only are we glorifying you and your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, we are also glorifying our mothers in whatever capacity they may have been in. Thank you so much for being the kind father that you are to create mothers for us to guide us and teach us to become the people that we are learning how to become and help us be strong in your name and in your worship. I say all these things humbly, sir, in your name and in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.